One of the really handy things in Affinity Designer is to use the appearance palette to generate styles that you can apply with a click of a mouse. So in this case I wanted to create some roads and I start off with a rectangle and uh, it's just a, a line that's really uh, has a wide stroke applied to it and in the appearance palette I'm gonna change the stroke width, I can do all the adjustments there and uh, I can also use the stroke palette as well to change the cap end and make adjustments that I want. Once I'm happy with that initial stroke I'm gonna duplicate it and uh, change the color swatch to a darker gray and then I can change the thickness of that. Notice that now the lower stroke uh, that's partially hidden by the top stroke is acting like the verge of a road and I can ch change darken, make this whatever I'd like and I can do, I'm going to end up doing this several times in this appearance palette. Notice I'm just using the stroke to build the appearance and then I'm going to turn that whole appearance into a style that I can then add or update. Here I'm adding another stroke, a yellow stroke this time. I'm going to narrow that down until it's a um, line down the middle of the road. This is the line. I can make this a dotted dashed line or I can make it a double line by putting another um, stroke on top of that that splits it in half or appears to split it in half like so. And a line you can't pass on the road. That's a two lane highway right now. I can drag that one out I make a copy of the first st stroke and then make some other changes, different types of road. So maybe a single line uh, road, duplicate that, and then again uh, click on the stroke options and do a dashed line, so a passing lane. And see how quickly you can build up just some quick style examples. To keep these vector illustrations from looking too flat, we're going to add a little bit of noise by going to the color palette and uh, changing the noise slider at the bottom under the color wheel. If you don't see it, if it says opacity instead, just click the little round dot on the left of the slider and that will toggle between noise and opacity. To add these appearances to the styles palette, just select one of your strokes, go to the styles menu at the top right and select add style from selection. And I'm just going to toggle through selecting each of those strokes and adding each of those styles. You can also rename them for ease if you'd like. I'm just going to leave them plain for now. And we can just draw a shape and add those strokes effects to the object just by clicking on the styles. Just toggle through to make sure they appear correctly. Sometimes the uh, strokes appearance might be off. Um, that might be a function of if going to the strokes palette and deselecting the scale with object or selecting scale with object to make sure that as you resize the object the strokes scale with it. Here I'm just going to draw a stroke with my pen tool and apply one of those roads to it to show you can curve these around and make an organic road for a map or uh, a board game design. Here's a quick demonstration of the importance of clicking that scale with object button and the stroke effect. So, uh, and you have to click it for each stroke that you add in the, in the appearance panel. So if I scale this object, you notice that they all scale together. If I make a copy of that and I uh, select one of those and uncheck it, well, I guess I'll uncheck them all. Notice that when I scale, the object gets bigger, but all the strokes will stay the same size that they are right now. So that's something to keep in mind. With a little bit of imagination, you can think of some clever ways to use these same principles in all kinds of applications for various illustration projects. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. Keep drawing, and we'll see you next time.